where we take the, today's story from. Now, let's all go to Luke chapter 15. We'll stand up to read now. 11 to 32. I'll read verse 11, you read verse 12, till we get to verse 32. Let's do it together. Please, once it is projected on screen, can we be on our feet? Luke chapter 15 from verse 11. Let's be on our feet in honor of God's word as we are going to read together. Children, be on your feet. Be on your feet. Pastor Imo is gradually beginning to look like the Ezekiel I knew in those days before you got married. This was how he was at that time. <laughs> I was looking at you since as praise was on. <laughs> People didn't know that he was a human resource uh, manager of uh, uh, of what? Great brands. That British tobacco company before. I will still use your story when it becomes sensible. I told him that time. I don't know why God said you should not marry this sister. This sister is our member. He went to bring leading brothers to come and talk to me. I said, I don't know. But not today. Not today. <sighs> then he said, please, the echo is much. Echo is high. Then he said, a certain man had two sons. You read verse 12. Let's go. Hmm. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possession with prodigal living. Another version we say with riotous living. Okay, let's go. You leave us 14. Read louder. I want to take verse 15. Then he went, sorry. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him, him into the fields to feed swine. Now you read verse 16. Where is it? Let's go. Is it different Bible we are reading? Let's read the uniform. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? Now you read verse 18. Let's go verse 18. Where are you? Media, I'm waiting. Let's go. I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. Now, I read verse 19, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Now, you read verse 20. Let's go. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Ari 21, and the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Now you read verse 22. Let's go. But the father said to his servant, Bring out the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet, which means he didn't have sandals again. And bring the fatted calf here and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. Now you read verse 24. Let's go. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to marry. They began to dance. I read verse 
25. Now his older son was in the field. And as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. Let's go. So he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. I read verse 27. And he said to him, Your brother has come. And because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. Now you read verse 28. Let's go. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore, his father came out and pleaded with him. Verse 29. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you. I never transgressed your commandment at any time. And yet, you never give me a young goat that I may marry with my friends. Verse 30. Let's go. But as soon as this son of yours came, who had devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the fathered calf for him. Ah, uh -uh, 31. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. Verse 32, which is the last one for we say, let's go. It was right that we should make merry and be glad. For your brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost and is found. Take your seat in his presence. The Lord bless you. Get your jotters ready right now. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. You know, when I was praying and trusting God at home for this uh, family Sunday, I was looking at the stories that I had prepared. I prepared some stories that I will use to bless you. Now, this story came to my mind. I'm not going to preach it like a preacher. I'm going to preach it like a storyteller. You know, this story came to my mind. And I kept wondering and pondering over it, you know. I was just studying this word, just kept coming. It was expanding itself in my mind. So I went back home, took the scriptures, read it again and again and again. And do you know that I eventually discovered about six things that we are to learn from this story? How many? Six. Now, and these six things are very, very important lessons that will help us as we walk the walk of life. You know, we all are walking the walk of life. That's why we don't sing that hymn. Uh, we don't sing that hymn until the day of what? Burial. Which means the battles don't end until we die. Now it is when we are dying at the point of burial that people will now begin to sing uh, that well, the battle is over, uh, the war is, has ended. Then begin to ascend and the hallelujah songs we follow but we all that are alive we are on a journey in this life tell your neighbor i'm in i'm i'm, in, I'm on a journey in this life so and as people on the journey we must learn so that we will not just fall anyhow you know we have enemies whether you like it or not we have enemies in this life journey that we are walking enemies that does not want us to reach our destination for reasons that are best known to them i don't need to go into that one now but this story i want to tell you i want us to learn from god showed me six things and we are going to look at the first one if you have any question write down and uh, bring it to the front it will reach me we are going to look at the first one i put it in form of um, um of a discussion you know that's why i'm going to be very very calm that, you know, at times when we look at our parents, we look at mentors, we look at uh, people we admire. Let me not say parents alone. People we admire. Uh, mentors. People that we like to be like, you know, we look at them, we want to be like them. You know, most times when we look at them, uh, I want to talk about one of the things we, 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 we focus on in their lives. Now, and that's where we we'll take our first point. What we focus on, you know, some people focus on a lot of things. And I want you to know that, I always say, it, it is your focus in this life that will determine what you run towards. Your focus determines your pursuit. Yes. What you look at determines what you run towards. Am I communicating? Now, if you look at the first thing that happened in that story, you will see that the Bible talks about a man that has two sons. Now, And the way the Bible talks about that man, that man was a very what? Wealthy man. 
Now, and we look at the first thing that we see in that man's life is that one of his sons, his younger son, came up to him and said, Daddy, Daddy, give me my own portion of goods. Now, if we have to look at it, it means that maybe the daddy has two children. It's a family. We didn't talk about the mother. Maybe the daddy has always been telling them, it is because of you, my children, that I'm working. We have had parents say things like that. Tori or money, she shall tori in motion down. Mukakiri, if it's for you, if it's not for you, we will tima tima je a bit in lower me. Maybe the father has always said things like that. And uh, you know, I now kept wondering why is it that this young man came to his dad to say, Daddy, okay, you have been laboring because of us. Why not divide what you have prepared for us or you are preparing for us? Give me my own portion now. Give me my portion now. Now, you know what I discovered when I was studying that scripture? I discovered that most times, when we look at the life of the people we admire, we only look at the glamorous part of their lives. We look at the cars, yeah, that, that's their ride. We look at their dress. Am I communicating? We look at the house, you know, the glamour around them. When I say glamour, we are looking at the glory among them, uh, you know, that their lives show. Ah, a wo, a wo, a wo moto to go. Ah, ah, a wo leti wong be. Ah, ah, you know, a wo amo, a wo duplex Jesus. A wo, a wo, you know, we look, we look at the glamour. And can I tell you this truth? It is because what we are focusing on is the glamour of their life. We are not learning what we ought to learn. Why do you think that young man? In our first lesson, we are looking at. Why did you think he asked for his portion? I believe he believed, that young man believed that what is making his father is the glamour aspect of his father's life. Hello? Oh, if not for my dad, my daddy has money. Baba me low ni job. Ah, my daddy has money. My daddy has servants that are working for him. My daddy has cars. Ah, look at these houses. My daddy is collecting rent from so so and so. You know, that was what he thought made his father who his father is. Now, he believed that if I have these things, I will become like my father or even better. And can I tell you this morning, church, stroke afternoon, when you look at great men, stop looking at the glamorous aspect of their life. What should you look at? Look at their sacrifice. Go close to them. Pay attention to the things they are doing that is making them to appear glamorous. That's why when you see young people today, you want to, they want to buy the, the most expensive phones. You say, oh, oh, pastor, you don't understand. I want, uh, uh, what do you call these expensive phones now? iPhone. Oh, pastor, you don't understand. I want to buy the most expensive car. Ah, pastor, if I'm going to build my own house. It's, if I, my children have told me before that I, if I, they are not praying to build the kind of house me and my wife is living now. Now, the reason is because what they focus on is glamour that was the mistake of this first this man that was his first major mistake it's just like i'm looking at my mentor bishop i look at the glamour around his life oh look at the number of cars that goes around with him whenever he's traveling look at the security men watching over him look at the siren those are the glamorous aspect of his life if i focus on the glamour i'm telling you i will wrong the wrong place if you focus on the glamorous aspect of people's life, you will run the wrong race. When I talk about the glamour, I talk about their, their dress, their phone, their ride, their testimonies. Now, you see the story of this young man. His father gave him all the money, Abby, but he returned back even without shoe. He returned as a beggar. He returned begging. In fact, he said to his daddy, Daddy, if you take me back, eh, take me as your slave. I am not worthy to be your son. It means that his focus was wrong. Now, pay attention. What do you focus in the life of anyone you see shining at the top? Focus on their sacrifice. Number one, their work attitude. These are things that makes you lifted. Number one, no, what do I say again? Focus on their work attitude. That's the first thing. Bow notion, she says, see, I remember the first time I went to Bishop Oedeko's house. I entered this house. He gave me a hug. The first thing I noticed was the atmosphere in his house. He created an atmosphere of God. Worship was all round. 
Now, and at the way I saw, he created an atmosphere of study for himself. You will see that this man was a workaholic. Now, that's why, see, these are the things you should teach your children. Going to the market to say, eh, my son is one year old, you bought bicycle, you bought a, a, a toy car, you bought, a, you bought all the toys, and you left out the main thing, or you leave out the main thing. You are killing that child. You know why that young man asked for, Father, give me my part of inheritance, give me goods? It's because that was what he was looking at. What do you look at? Look for goal setting attitude. How do these people at the top set goals? Pastor Matthew Ashimolo shared an experience. He said he was coming from, from UK to Nigeria. He boarded first class. He said when, when they took him to his seat, he discovered that Dangote sat beside him. He, he said and he greeted him. Aliku Dangote, the richest man in Africa. As at that time, he said they exchanged uh, uh, pleasantries and he said he was adjusting his seat. You know, first class, he wanted to sleep. He said Dangote brought out his briefcase, brought out some documents and started writing. The guy was just writing. He said, he now asked him, why are you writing? What are you writing? Six hours flight. He said, the man said, ah, there are some reports I just need to prepare. I will need them where I'm going. He said he was shocked. For six hours that they were on air, Aliko Dangote didn't stop writing until they landed. It was when they announced that the plane will soon be landing that he gathered his documents together, put it in the file, put in a briefcase and gave to his PA, a white man that carried his briefcase. Pastor Matthew said, his mindset from that day changed. You don't look at people's glamorous life. Go closer to them to learn their sacrifice. And what's the first aspect of their sacrifice? Their work attitude. What's the next one? Their goal-setting attitude. Say here. You know, it's family talk. Look at their commitment to God. Look at their commitment to family values. Look at their commitment to what? To family values. Now, this was what this young, this was where the real young man missed it. And that's where so many Christians are missing it today. I was in a meeting. I uh, were expecting, my mentor put up that meeting. We we're expecting Bishop David Oedipo to come. And a few minutes before he, 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 he came, my mentor said, they've called him right now, that he has left Otta. And after some minutes, we just saw an helicopter at this, on the sky. Then my mentor said, we all should come out, stay around to receive him. Do you know that as people came out, all 90% of the servants of God that came out, ah, ah, okay. You know, people were praying all kinds of prayer. I didn't pray. You know what I did? I went to a corner and I was saying, Lord, please show me what this man has been doing that I'm yet to do that has taken him to this point. What are you looking at? What's your focus? This young man missed it because he thought that what makes people great is money. Can I come again? It is not money that makes people great. Because in my lifetime, I've pastored 30 years now. I have seen people that receive inheritance in millions. That start, they are still begging till this morning. And you ask, ah, he let on for him call Atita. Much of the daddy officially like Atita. They touch millions. You know, see how see how your pastor is jubilating over two million naira in project account. I have not seen two million naira stay in one account before in my life. That we are looking at the account, eh? Two million naira stay. Me really. But if you see the projects we have done, because I understand sacrifice, 
I understand work attitude. I understand goal setting. Thank God for my wife. There are sometimes we set some goals. There are some things we can't afford to eat in our house. Thank God for my children. To, we tell them, this season, please tell the technical to touch this phone. This season, we can't afford to, to live like this if we want to achieve this. And once I have a very supportive wife, she talks to the children. Family talk, how are you? And the children, we know that nobody is making any demand on anything. Daddy wants us to achieve this. And by the time we achieve it, I gather the family again, we start dancing. We have done this. This young man look at the wrong thing. What are you looking at? Ah, Omo, ah, Tabari, Tabari shirt, T. David Owo, Malora. She, you want more? Yeah, I was told you are no studio. To, to fine tune his voice to, to achieve a goal. So learn from this young man. I wrote here. If you don't get it right in your focus, you'll be pursuing the wrong thing all your life. And you may not pay attention to the needful. If you don't get it right in your focus, you'll be pursuing the wrong thing all your life. And you may not pay attention to the needful. I remember when I was, uh, I was in, my, in my 30s. You know, I'm, I'm moving towards 50 now. I and my wife were having a meeting. And we, thank God we agreed. On it, on it, eh? Before you are 40, oh my, you're it It is now I understand. You know why? Thank God we achieved it. I have children in higher institution. And you know, Nigeria uh, 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 educational sector, you know how we are struggling. If I had not achieved that at that time, putting children in university now would have been extremely difficult. Please focus on the right thing. It is not money that makes people great. Tell three people around you, money don't make people great. Three people. I know some of you are thinking, are you sure money don't put 10 million in my hand? If you don't have work attitude, if you don't have goal setting attitude, whoa, oh, yeah, my follow. Because there will be money you don't work, you don't work to increase, diminish. Second lesson. Are you learning? Yes, sir. Family talking, you know, family in Latin Keko. Listen, when I was studying that scripture, thinking, why did the father give him his portion? Abi, the father was in the position to say no now. Now it's just like, let Uriola come and meet me now and say, Daddy, give me your car. For a child to ask for his inheritance, he didn't belong to him. He's saying, Daddy, what you have labored for that you plan for me, give me now. I was now asking in my spirit, why did the father agree when the boy said, give me my portion? And the father said, okay, take. Now, follow me. I wrote down this. Be careful of the prayer you put on either God, your mentors, your parents, because you want a yes from them. I will explain. Be careful of the prayer you put on God your mentor, your parents, because you want a yes. You can get a yes that will destroy you. Look up. I know of so many young ladies who try to convince their parents to get a yes to marry their brother and they later regretted it. Once you, when you want a yes, please sir, please ma, be careful of prayer you are placing. How am I going? Some of you, before you go, how am I going to go and tell my daddy now? Oh, oh, oh. How will I go and tell my daddy now so that daddy will agree for me to for me to do that thing? You know, you now begin to phantom all kinds of things. See, no matter the kind how desperate you are for a yes, be careful. The father himself knew that this boy will return. 
But because the young man must have mounted prayer, Daddy, Daddy, I will kill myself. I will hang myself. Oh, I will hang myself. Oh, you know the Bible didn't tell us all those ones. But before the father will agree, that boy must have done certain things that will make the father to say, "Oh, I will feel it." Mark by feeling you are alone, because I've read in the book of Romans one, it says because of their kind of desire, their thoughts, God gave them over to a, a reprobate mind, which means that you can actually pressurize God to give you a yes when the answer is supposed to be no. Follow me. Why did the father not refuse him? I put A. He knew he would learn from the hard way called experience. Some of you used to say experience is the best teacher. Experience is not the best teacher. Experience is the worst teacher. The best teacher is, is, is instruction. If you learn by instruction, you will, by instruction, you will save yourself from trouble. But if you learn from experience, you may have some wounds that will never heal That's why when Jesus our Lord was going, he told us, I will give you a counselor. The best person you need in your life is an instructor, an advisor, a counselor. But some will say, no matter the counselor, pastor, I will kill or try, a kill or try. The father knew that this boy will never learn from instruction. Let him go and learn from experience. Yes, sir. Oh, dear, oh, dear. 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 Oh, dear. Thinking, believe, I'm going to go. 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 Stop thinking that you will learn from experience. Remember the time we invited uh, 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 Mr. Dr. Lamitoye, the owner of uh, Ibadan Central Hospital and uh, Academic Suit Hotels. He said when he wanted to start going to hotel business, he went to buy 52 books of those who run hotels successfully. He read 52 books. He said he now discovered that there is no how you can run an hotel in Nigeria that will run 24 hours electricity with less than 25 rooms he didn't need to go through it to come to know it somebody have gone through it and has put it in a book be careful because some of you because you are desperate for a yes you are ready to even lie Sister, what did God show you about that brother? He says, I, I was throwing water in the well. And as I wanted to pour it, he brought bucket. And I heard the voice of heaven saying, Toss here the Lord, that's my husband. And you know you are lying. Wait, who will live there? Is it the pastor? She pastor will be family here. Me. That's why, see, don't make up your mind. I won't learn by experience anymore. I mean, I, that's why I listen to. I listen. I listen. I read Christian books. I read books. I read medical books. Any book that can give me knowledge, I read. So that it should not be that I'm learning from experience. Say so here. I didn't hear you. Because you want yes. You have cooked up too many lies because you want yes you have put up so many kind of attitude because you just want yes some yes can destroy you look at the b part the father knew that he didn't have what it takes to sustain what he requested for the father knew he would return so he gave in and I wrote here, be careful how you paint your request just because you want yes. 
Make up your mind to be transparent. Even if you get a no when you want yes, you know that you are getting a no in the will of God. Ah, sir, these 30 years, I've handled several issues, oh, several cases. I handle one case. It is only me and the sister eh, that knew that she didn't graduate. Only me and her. They push her, push her, push her, push her, push her till she got to university. Accounting. The lady told me when, because God revealed to me by, by vision, that sir, I was rusticated from school. 200 level. But I was living within school premises till I finished. I said, how do you now do graduation? He said, I cook on graduation day. My family members came to eat with me. What did you present? He said, I printed one certificate from the computer. So the whole family knows her as the only graduate. But she knows that she didn't graduate. If everybody deceives you, please don't deceive yourself. Tell your neighbor, second lesson, I will learn by instruction. I didn't hear you. One more time. People that learn by instruction, they look for instructors. They look for people that have what they need. And when those people cancel, then they follow. There's no time. Let's look at number three. Third lesson I saw from that story. The Bible says, and the young man went into riotous living. That's verse 13. Old King James. I checked my dictionary for riotous living. It's living life without restriction. You do anything you want to do at the time you want to do it. New King James says he went into halots. Nobody could control him. I was wondering, Lord, why was this young man's life was like that? Why, why, why was it like that? At least him and his brother live in the same house. If their father was like that, the younger brother would have been like that. But you know what I discovered? I wrote it down. I wrote it down this way. That was what the society he surrounded himself with it's presented to him now which means the people you put around you the people you allow around you determines your habit so he puts wrong people around his life people that live that kind of life they are around him so every single time he was coming out oh, he was coming out to spend he spends without restriction Cameraman, if you want to write, write. If you want to do your job, do your job. Face one. You can't do two things at the same time. So, by the time he realized money was gone, you know what I want to say under this place? Eh? Put the right set of people around your life. I want to rare. Now, these are the people that determines the, that will determine the outcome of your life. When I was young, my father used to say it. To buy for rare, homie. Now, these are the things we grew up with. You know, society is a very good thing. popular. Tobamaji ela aro bai wa gbo awon oro isiti sise ise ki pa ni aise re gan laisan labuku you hear you know it's not like today that somebody will wake you up with a yo 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 ga yo 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 you know that's what you wake up with in those days they may wake you up with from radio yo you know all those all those proverbs i remember i was remembering one song when i was preparing for this 
um, message. I am Ura, I am Ura, Sisheo, Isheo, You remember that song? Mura, Sisheo, let me, Isheo, Lafi, Shekini, Lafi. These are the things that Tafi Yirawa can die. But today's children don't want to listen. They are creating the wrong society around themselves. Today's children don't want to work. They look at the glamorous life in the life of people and they want to use big things. That's why they will do Yahoo now. You can't expect me to, to work hard, sweat, eh? and go and buy an iPhone. No, 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 let, let's be sincere. That I work hard, I sweat. Gather my money. And I say, okay, the next thing is for me. I want to go and buy an iPhone of 600,000. Before we start thinking of that, I will have bought land. I will have built a house. That's why we see, I'm surprised. We see students of today. And you see some things in their hands. And I'll be asking, did you come out of your house? He spent what he had on what? Riotous living. In our days, when we were young, I felt in their days now, one felt Jeron, one run Jekekere, and Roma Po. A sign that you didn't work for that money. Are you angry? Even if you are angry, you have entered this service, you can't escape. You have had this one already. Can I go on? I wrote here, avoid tempting yourself. If you move, put the wrong people around yourself, you'll be tempting yourself. People that tells you that the little thing you can you can acquire from your sleep from your income. I think that you are at the low class, low wow, low class, low wow. If you put it, you are tempting yourself. Stop tempt. Let me preach to your neighbor. Stop tempting yourself. You know what? That young man, that young man will be spending money, and those will be telling ah, big guy, yeah, big guy, yeah. You go and bring it, big guy, yeah, big guy, yeah. Till he spend the last. Some of you think this is only in the Bible. Obama, you can remember. I, I won't mention name. We used to have one brother in our church. His father too was rich. He would buy drinks for people. When he didn't have money, they were now mocking him. You know what he did? He went to break his brother's room, carried the brother's laptop, sold it, and took boys to join it to show them that he has not expired. Who tempted him? He tempted himself by the kind of people he's moving with. I'd rather move with people that will be satisfied with what I can afford for now. Instead of moving with people that will now make him, they are, they are working, I'll be running to follow them. I won't come running. Only rush of one million and I come and move on. I want you to join. See what about the rush of one million? What about the world? I eat. So to meet their level, you are tempting yourself. Say here. You didn't hear me. Say here. He spent what he had. That's why I see. Anytime I talk, don't be jealous, so don't feel jealous. My marriage is going to 21 years. Next year, I'll be 21. I'm going to go to 21 years. I'm going to go to 21 years. I'm going to go to Chicken Grotto. Chicken George. Yes. Tabatin, Tibatin, Silo Lingbay, Okia Duni, Rice Lewe, Mara Rice Lewe, and Funimichi. Ah, 
I will take you. You get it? We have got it. Like she lay with everybody, what dear see, and she be going on with it gladly. That's what I could afford. See, if you are dating a lady, brother, you know we are marriage talk. No, one don't answer, Lenny. If you are dating a lady, that you have to borrow to maintain that lady. That lady is an oversized wife. Oh. She will drain you. Oh yeah, fast. We don't have all the time. Let's go to. Are you here? So the people he, you mingle with, write this down. The people you mingle with at times determine your taste. The people you mingle with at times determine your taste. So his society affected him. Fourth lesson. I love this fourth one. You will show us verse 14. Show me verse 14. Now in verse 14 the Bible says, And there was a famine. In your cause, in your in your see moon, but you had spent all. There arose what a severe famine in the land, and it began to be in want. Look up. You know what God told me when I studied this place. Please, look up. Let me write this. Life. Look up. Is programmed in seasons. And look at what God told me. Seasons of abundance and scarcity is part of the journey of life. But it is the way you manage your abundance that will determine how you live your life in times of scarcity. That's why we have rain season, we have dry season. Some of you don't know that that's how life is programmed. If you see anybody that throughout his life is not experiencing scarcity, go and find out. That person must have managed his reigning season very well. If you have scarcity, I must tell you the truth, you wasted your abundant seasons. I'll come. If you are, if you go through scarcity, time of famine like this, and things you are broke, you have wasted your abundance. Kuyako broke. But the problem is, so many people we we waste because in the time of abundance, see the time of abundance. God told me is extra provision for the days of scarcity. So whenever there is abundance, me, I'm always afraid. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Ah, kilo sheleti. Provision one, kobai. Scarcity in bolaipe. I have to be wise. I have to invest in this, this, this and that. Are you, am, I, am I communicating? That has been what has been telling us. That's why when Pharaoh got that dream, he said, I saw in my dream that the fat cows were being swallowed by the thin cows. Ha, ah, Joseph says, sir, ah, I see seven years of super abundance. And after it, there will be a kind of scarcity that there will never be a sign that you once had abundance before. Ah, okay, what do we do? Joseph said, there's no problem. You can't change these two seasons. But we can manage. You know what we are going to do, sir? Let us save one fifth of every abundance. One over five, every abundance. One over five, every abundance. One over five, every abundance. Every, one over five, every abundance. Every one over. Five. They saved for seven years. When scarcity struck, the second seven years, the whole world was looking for food, but Egypt was selling food. Why? The whole world also enjoy abundance. So, why were they coming to Egypt? now in scarcity because they wasted their own abundance in your time of abundance there is this prayer there is this desire for you to buy what you don't need I 
Ama ashe final barrier. Semi semi final last year last time. Elo ba mi wa yiti ti ti ye ka ife lengba. E ba mi wa hold to da. Mi o ya wulo wa ni koko. Agbara mi be. That's why I say you must learn to understand values before money comes. I want to come what? Valuable, you want? Oh God. Am I talking to the right people? Yes, when scarcity came, it affected this young man, but it didn't affect the young man's father. You know, I fed them now. That's why if you go back to, our, to your house, I'll be, you know, here with your little. <laughs> but it was the kind of life he lived. Life without restriction. Kusentu le bawi. Kusentu le basoro. Listen, both the drying season and the scarcity season will definitely come. Your level of preparation is what determines how good you make use of each season. I was telling my children yesterday at the, at the house that why do you think I'm spending on you to go to school? I told them to give me reasons. Ah, uh, when you said, so that at old age, you can have something to fall back to. I said, lie, lie. That me, I will have something to fall back to. Okay? Good opinion, but that's not it. I said, Nola, he said, so that we can become good people. I said, no. I said, you know what God told me? I said, God said, I should invest in my children so that they cannot they will not be depending on me when what I have will be alone for me and my wife. So why do you need to invest on your children so that at old age eh, they will not be coming back home to take from you? They can be independent on their own. That's why use this season to be planting in their life. Be planting their life. There are some parents that at their old age, they are the ones still sending money to their children. It will not be your portion. I didn't hear your amen. Number five lesson, fifth lesson, fifth lesson, five, sharp, sharp. Okay, I wrote some things down because of AY and some of our people that used to pick coats. Every abundance, I will stay one place, type. <laughs> Every abundance is advanced provision to help you prepare for the day of scarcity. I come again. Every abundance is advanced provision to help you prepare for the day of scarcity. Let me say it one more time. Every Abundance is advanced provision to help you prepare for the day of scarcity. Number one, two, days of famine comes to expose both the wasteful and the wise. Should I come again? Days of famine comes to expose both the wasteful and the wise. Scarcity comes to expose both the wasteful. If you are wasteful, scarcity lo mashwe. If you are wise, it's time of scarcity lo mashwe. Let's take fifth lesson. Number five. Verse 17. Show me verse 17. We see that the young man came back to his senses. Why? He suddenly realized. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare? Ah! And I perish with hunger. Take note of this. 
he discovered he had lost something important. At times, you may not know how important what you have is until you lose it. May you not lose what you have. You know what this man discovered? Why is it that nobody wants to give me food? He now suddenly discovered that nothing is free. Nothing is free. Oh. It was after he had lost it. I was reading a story in the course of the week. Please touch that for me. In the course of the week, this woman's husband committed suicide. It was when they were burying the man. The woman started crying seriously. Her friend now said, and her friend that followed her was holding her. It's okay. Don't cry again. The friend now said she realized. She remembered how that her friend and her late husband that they were burying used to fight. He used to call the man useless man. Okay, you're ready to. Useless man. Man that you are nonsense. Out of the, the world, depression, the man committed suicide. And this woman too, that was holding her, fought with her husband before she left home. She said something I told her. You may lose this. If, you, if it's your husband, they are burying like this. How will you be able to cope? That was when she realized her way to. Way to. The way this woman used to abuse her husband. Look at how she's crying now that the man. So which means that she missed this man. Hey, there are some things you may not know how valuable they are until you lose them. May you not lose them. That's why value what you have. Take the last lesson. Have you learned something today? Last lesson. His father received him back with open arm. Even a celebration was put up for him. But what, be but what becomes of his faith? What becomes his faith? I want to summarize with a question. His father received him back with open arm. Even a celebration was put up for him. But what becomes his faith? What do you think happened to him last? The father already told the first one that everything I have is yours. Do I forgive him? But he cannot have access to what he has lost. That's why before you misbehave, think, oh, God can forgive you, but may not restore to you what you once had. Imagine, they killed cow. That was the last one you ate. <laughs> And the other one was angry, ah, daddy, daddy. He said, everything that is mine is yours. So, what will now be the fate of the young man that returned? He has no more inheritance. You know why I brought this last part up? Think very well before you throw what you have away. That thing that looks like nonsense now, you may need it tomorrow. That's why look at me, Pastor Prince Will Afalabi. I don't throw people away. I don't want I don't close doors when I when I don't close relationships anyhow. He's back. They, they, they embrace him. They welcome him. But he had nothing to live for again. Let's learn from this story. Short story. But I believe God has spoken to you. Have you learned something? rise upon your feet and begin to give him glory begin to give him glory be on your feet don't be tired any part that minister to you don't joke with it. Any part that minister to you, make sure you don't joke with that part. Look up, open your eyes. I didn't say you should pray. It's not a prayer meeting. I want you to go home and sit down with 
the path that ministers. If your own is number one, you are looking at the wrong thing. You are looking at the glamorous aspect of people's life. You are not looking quietly at the things they are doing to get to where they are. You better go and change. Ask my wife and some of my pastor friends. Anytime I go for a minister's conference and it's a superior minister that is preaching, see, look at me. This is how I used to. I would do like this. My pen, my jotter is open. Listening to find out the person's value. What is it doing that I need to learn from? Yes, my mentor is a big man. Imagine me going to his house now and looking at this kind of his own kind of phone. You open it like this. My children know the name of the phone. They say it's one Samsung something. Z, they open it like this. Emil Wobel. Let me now come and say, hey, yes. Um, Caleb, you know? Samsung Z Flip is what I'm going to look, look for. Mama, I know Samsung Z, Z Flip. My dad, my wife, me. I'm not looking at that. I entered this house. I saw the setting. I, I didn't look. I'm not carried away by the setting. Ma? I'm not carried away by the setting. If you see the house, gigantic house, they said one member built it and furnished it. You know what I'm looking at? How did this man labor on that person for that person to get to that point? That's how I want to labor on you. That's why I'm praying for you, fasting, teaching the word so that you become great. Then I will not be the one to tell you. The Spirit of God will now tell you that, ah, Pastor to Shishebai. We can bless her. But she had this machine fire. Hello, ma. Hello, Auntie Bola. I'm not seeing me for doom. Hey, not seeing me. He shared me with you to share me. Yes, if I if I labor well as a pastor, I don't need to remind you. Stop looking at the wrong thing. Oh, Benny. Do you know when she was selling plantain? Before she got to this point, if you don't know a person's story, don't envy them. Mama and dad, I was the one talking about one Ah, eh. That's the first lesson. Don't look at the wrong point. I know all my people, my dickness, one, dickness, two. This, this, this dickness, the day she entered our church, I was preaching about land. Remember, that if you don't have land, you are like a flower pot. You don't have permanent location. She called her husband in Togo. The man does embroidery. He's an embroider. Fashion, this, Abi fashion, whatever. I've been now they do say. And I, I, we'll talk that one later. <laughs> uh, the man sent money. He, she went to buy land. She didn't went to look for a bigger house to rent. When I went to see that land that time, it was inside the bush. How she mama ramoto nile? Hey, nile anywhere, hey, one come out to job. Somebody said, You have a land cruiser, Land Rover, and you don't have land, you are a fool. And you and you now have a landlord. The first time I went to bless that house, man, it was a, a cat carton. They do one. They, they, they did one side and one room. Uh, and the house, my mama said, be like this. Two rooms. And they used carton. Pack, pack it, package everywhere. And they moved, started from there. Today, go there. They have now completed the building. POP everywhere. 
do you think that kind of man will think of divorcing this kind of your wife? Look at the right thing. What second point? Have you forgotten? Ah, I just finished preaching now. I didn't say saving, second point. Yes. I talk about yes. See, be open for counsel. Don't try to be manipulative. That's what I meant. Don't be manipulative because you want a yes. Be open for counsel. Is this thing right? Because you'll be the one to suffer it most if you deceive yourself into error. Let me tell you the story briefly of one of our sons. He, he said, I want to travel, I want to travel, I want to travel. We tried talking to him. He didn't answer. I want to travel any country. So we spoke to somebody. He traveled to Dubai. As this my our son in church got to Dubai, I was the first person he called. Hello, Papa. I said, well, I've landed. I said, praise God. He said, don't praise God, sir. I am coming back tomorrow. I said, why? He said, all the people I met here are better than them. He said, they don't rent house here. They rent space. He said, I said, space as how? He said, bed space. Not your bed, though, where you will sleep. That a whole hall, you now rent bed space. You put mat on the floor where you sleep. He says, I have a house in Nigeria. I have three shops at a lawyer in Nigeria. I'm coming back tomorrow. Somebody we're out of shame. That, ah, kino maso. Maso ki motion wala motu te pada de. Ah, ma wambi neo. Matu wama ti Nigeria send the wusi en Dubai. Ah, ma tonle wala ma ya foto ni awan. Awan shops won. We are chopping live. He returned, and I'm telling you, he returned the second day. He, uh, he didn't talk about any traveling till now. He says, I'm more comfortable where I am. You think everybody that travels is enjoying life? If God put it in your mind and opened door for you to travel, travel, I will support you with prayer. And stop thinking that if you are a lizard here, you'll be a crocodile here. You don't know how to walk here. You don't know how to uh, uh, set goals here. You now go there. It will be worse. I don't know why that there was just laughing and laughing and laughing and laughing. It has been long you have come to church. It's like the thing is entering you. I bet you know Japan. <laughs> What's the third one? That's where we talk about savings, Abby. Don't waste your abundance. So am I waste there? When God gives you abundance, don't waste it. There are several ways that you can waste abundance. If you go and put yourself into the wrong project, you are pursuing a vision that God didn't give you. At the end, you now realize I've wasted all my money on this thing and it didn't work. Face what God has placed before you. I've taught you here how to save. When you are tightening, you are saving. When you give into projects, things of God, you are saving. When you invest your money in profitable business, you are saving. And when you are doing business, I've taught you here before, calculate if your expenses is greater than your profit, you cannot prosper. If they put the whole anointing on you, you will still be poor. You must, be, you must make sure that your expenses is, is not up to 50% of your profit. Have you learned something? Today is Thanksgiving. 